Okay, today we're going to do more qualitative analysis of nonlinear systems. So let's start with a nonlinear system dx over dt is going to be 2x times 1 minus x over 2. This is going to be our competing species model again. And dy over dt is going to be equal to uh, 3y times 1 minus y over 3 minus 2xy. Okay, so instead of looking for equilibrium points and linearizing, today we're going to study something called null clines. Now the null clines are going to be lines where the derivative of x or of y is equal to 0. So the x null cline will be when 0 is equal to 2x times 1 minus x over 2 minus xy and the y null cline when 0 is equal to 3y times 1 minus y over 3 minus 2xy. All right. The point of these is on the x null cline, right, the vector field will be either pointing straight up or pointing straight down because there will be no x component to the vector because dx over d2 is 0 there. The y null cline will be points where the vector field either points left or right or vice versa and that will be because the y component there is 0 so the vector can only point in directly right or directly left. So let's take a look at the x null cline first. Uh, now I'm going to factor this in a better way here. I'm going to pull the x out and then we get 2 minus x minus y. So x times the quantity 2 minus x minus y. Right? So the null clines, the x null clines are there's two of them. When x is equal to 0, we automatically get an x null cline. And when y is equal to negative x plus 2. When y is equal to negative x plus 2, then we also will get dx over dt equals 0. So let's draw these two points. Okay, One of them is here. This is x equals 0. And the other one is negative x plus 2. Okay, And this is a competing species uh, system, so we're only going to correspond ourselves with positive x and y. So let me just draw a dot, dotted line here. This is not an alkaline. This is the line uh, uh, x equals 0. This, oh, this is the alkaline. Okay, so in this region here, in this triangular region here, we have that y is less than negative x plus 2. And in this region over here, we have that y is greater than negative x plus 2. On this line, right, we can only have the vector field pointing straight up or down. 
And along this line also, we can only have the vector be pointing straight up or down. But in between here, right, when x is positive, but y is not big enough to make this into a negative, we are moving only in the rightward direction, okay? Our arrows point right. And here, our arrows point left, okay? Because the x component is going to be negative here, the x component of dx dt. So we can combine this with the y null clients to get some information here. Okay, but all, but but what we know is all the arrows here, depending on who cares how much up or down they point, but they're all have a rightward x component, and the arrows over here for the slope field are all going to have a negative x component, and the arrows right here are just going to be uh, straight up or down when we're on that line, and in fact, that's going to depend on the size of dy dt. So there's the x null client, and we, we haven't really got much information from it. We're going to get the y null client, and then we're going to put our information together. So we're looking for the y null client now, and that is going to be when 0 is equal to, I'm factoring again, y times 3 minus y minus 2x. So y equals 0 will be a null cline. And y equals uh, 2x minus 3. Or sorry, negative 2x plus 3 will be a null cline. So that picture, right, we have uh, y equals 0, which is this axis here, and we're only caring about positive y, so we're only caring about one side here. And then we have this line with slope negative 2. Okay. And then let's put in the x equals 0 line here. So this is y equals 0. And this is y equals negative 2x plus 3. Okay, here y is going to be larger than negative 2x plus 3. And so our dy over dt is going to be negative, so our arrows are always going to point downward. Under here, the arrows are going to point upward. And on this line, right, we have exactly horizontal directions. Now what we're going to do is plot both the x, y, null cline and the y null cline together on one plot so that we can see what happens. So let's draw our axes here. Okay. So our important line for the x null cline was y equals 2 minus x. So let's see here. 2 minus x. Let's draw this line. So this is y is equal to 2 minus x. And this is the x null cline, and so that means that the vector field has to be vertical along this line. Okay. Now, the other null cline that was important for us here is going to be the y null cline, and that was uh, 3 minus 2x. So that is going to look something like this. There. And on that line, we have exactly a 
horizontal slope field. All right, so what's going on here? Now, remember, with the, with the uh, y null climb, we know that the arrows point down to the right of the triangle, and they point up inside the triangle. And for the x null climb, the arrows point right inside here, but they point left outside of the blue triangle. So what this allows us to do now is we can kind of draw some flow lines, right? In this little triangle here, we are moving, let's see, we are moving up because we're inside the red triangle, but we're moving left because we're outside the blue triangle. Right? So if we were going to draw a flow line here, we would have to go up and left. In this region where we're inside both triangles, we're going up and to the right. Let me see how that kind of... We're going right, but now we start going left. Here we have an equilibrium point, right? Okay, over here, we are going down and right because we're going right because we're inside the blue triangle but down because we're outside the red triangle so down and right it's going to look like this over here we're going down and let's see left because we're outside down and left. Okay, so from these pictures here, we kind of get an idea of what's going on with the flow, not just at the equilibrium point. So we're using the null climb to do that. Let's take a look at a picture of a slope field here and confirm all right, so here we've got the going up and to the right, but then switching to up and to the left. Like I saw here, up and to the right, switching to up and to the left. Here we've got up and right, switching to down and right. Up and right, switching to down and right. Up and right, and then here it switches to down. Over here, we have down and left, but then at some point, we start going up and left, right? Down and left, but then here, we start going up and left. Right? So these arrows follow the trends given to them by the null climb.